Hey guys, uh, this is a video to go through uh, this question here. We're just going to be looking at part B. Um, so the question reads, consider a 10.194 kg block resting on a plane inclined at 30 degrees. It's held in place by a force P, which is at an angle of inclination of 10 degrees to the plane. If the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.3, find the values for P that will just hold the block from sliding down the plane. So this has already been solved in a previous video. Um, and to just hold the block before moving up the plane. Now for this case, uh, the impending motion is that the block is just about to move up the plane. So we see the block, um, it's just about to move up this section here. Um, our impending motion is towards the x direction. So here we can call this the impending uh, motion. All right. So for this system, uh, we also have four forces in this system. Uh, we will have the uh, weight force, which is acting downwards. Um, the weight force W, um, we can calculate that by multiplying the weight equal to mass times gravity, uh, where mass is 10.194. And our gravitational force is uh, 9.81, or gravitational acceleration. This will give us a value equal to 100 uh, newtons. Uh, we also have our normal reaction force. This is going to be normal or uh, perpendicular to this uh, surface here. So there's N. Um, also we'll have friction. So friction will act to oppose the motion. So if the block is about to move up the plane, uh, like we have in this question here, our motion just about to go um, up the plane, uh, we will have friction acting in the opposite direction to that motion. So here we'll have F. Next. So now we've got our, our forces here. Um, each of the forces can be broken up into their components um, along the X and the Y uh, direction. Uh, the weight force can be broken up into a component uh, going downwards. Um, we know that this angle here is 30 degrees. Uh, that means that this angle here is 60 degrees. Uh, this one here will be 30 degrees and this angle here, as a result, will be 30 degrees. The weight force will be broken up into a Y component, so the weight in the Y component <coughs> would be equal to 100 times uh, cosine 30. Um, we'll have a component in the X direction here, so this one here would be equal to 100 times sine 30. Uh, P will have two components as well, so P will have a component in the X direction here. Uh, this would be equal to P times cosine 10. And it will have a Y component of force as well, um, acting upwards. So this will be equal to P times, um, times sine of 10 degrees. Okay. Uh, so now that we've drawn our free body diagram, um, the free body diagram consists of only the red arrows um, and any dimensions. Uh, you can leave out the blue lines if you like. So the first step now um, in our calculations is to check out the um, equilibrium of forces in our system. So we know that the summation of forces and the y direction should be equal to zero. In the y direction, we will have the normal force uh, acting upwards, we will have the weight force acting downwards, well a component of it, and we'll have a component of the force P um, acting in the positive y direction. Uh, so we'll start with the weight force, this will be 100 cosine 30 in the negative direction. Then um, P times sine 10, acting in the positive direction. And then also our normal force, so plus N 
and this will be equal to zero. Uh, next, we'll have the summation of forces in the x direction. So, the summation of forces in the x direction. This should be equal to uh, zero for our system. Uh, so, for this, we have uh, P cosine uh, 10 acting towards the right, we have F acting towards the left, and we have a component of weight force as well. So uh, F we have in the negative direction, so this is different from our previous video, uh, minus F, uh, plus P times cosine 10, and then minus our weight component, so minus uh, W times a cosine, uh, well, W times sine 30. So this will also be equal to zero. Um, the third equation that we have is to do with friction. Uh, so we're looking at the case where the block just um, is just about to move up the plane, so it just holds the block before moving up. Um, so in that case, uh, the friction here will be equal to a maximum friction as well. Uh, so F max is equal to mu times n. Um, and for that relationship, we have uh, 0 0.3 as our state friction coefficient. So F max is equal to 0 0.3 times our normal force. So now we have three equations. Um, we've got three unknowns, uh, so P, uh, N, and F. Uh, the weight force here we know that's equal to 100 newtons. So P, N, and F are our unknowns. Um, and we have now three equations. So the equation for the summation of forces in the Y direction the equation for the summation of forces in the x-direction, we'll call that equation 2, and the equation for the maximum friction in our system, uh, so this is equation 3. Alright, so now what we'll do is we can substitute values in. Um, equation 3, we could try to substitute that into equation 1. Um, there's no f into there, but we'll write it as um, 3 going into equation 1. Um, we end up with the same equation, so minus 100 cosine 30 plus P sine 10 plus N equal to zero. And then this can be uh, rearranged into um, this following form. So P sine 10 plus the normal force equal to 100 times cosine 30. Uh, so for also, we can do the same for equations 2 and 3. So for equation 2 and 3, um, we can put equation uh, 3 into equation 1. Uh, here we'll have the um, force plus the friction force equal to, um, sorry, friction force plus P times cosine 10 minus uh, W, which is 100, sine 30 equal to zero. Um, so subbing now um, F max into this equation, uh, this value will become 0 0.3 times N. So this becomes 0 0.3 times N, the negative of that, plus P cosine 10 minus 100 sine 30 equal to zero. Uh, rearrange now so we can write this as uh, P cosine 10 minus 0 0.3 uh, N equal to 100 times sine 30. So now we can solve uh, simultaneous equations for uh, these two equations. Sine 10 uh, will be the coefficient with P uh, one will be the coefficient with the normal force, 100 cosine 30 will be this value here. Um, so we can solve this using the elimination method or substitution methods, um, which you will have learnt in mathematics. Um, so 
here we can solve for those. Um, so I'll just put these uh, up. So just to reiterate, so it was uh, these three were the coefficients, uh, these three were the coefficients, um, and we can see that there is a um, uh, the equations which have been rearranged. Um, so you may have, may have missed that. Um, this one here, I have rearranged uh, to get this equation at the bottom here by taking p cos 10 uh, minus 0 0.3 n and also bringing the 100 sine 30 to the other side. Okay, so now we can solve for these two uh, variables. Um, I'm going to do this through my calculator uh, just to speed things up. Um, so here I'll have sine 10, uh, 1 is my coefficient, 100 times cosine 30. Um, cosine 10 is this coefficient, uh, minus 0 0.3, and 100 times sine 30. We'll solve, and then here we'll have P equal to uh, 73.2. Eight uh, newtons, and we'll have n equal to seventy three point eight eight newtons. Uh, so here we have uh, the maximum value of p getting up to seventy three point uh, two eight uh, newtons. Now, if we compare this to the results that we got from our previous uh, question, um, so. Here, the two sets of solutions are shown here. This was for the case when we had um, motion going uh, down the plane. Uh, this was for the case when we had motion going up the plane. Um, we see that there is a range of values of P. Um, if the value is above 25.75 newtons and below 73.28 newtons, the system will stay stationary. All right, so um, thank you for your attention. Um, Hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh,